Everything is written in this letter from my grandpa. I know exactly what you did. That's a lie. It's not a lie. Shall I read it out loud for you? Yes, that's nonsense, all lies. Even now, they refuse to admit what they've done. I was beyond angry, just utterly amazed. Just give me that letter. My father-in-law tried to lunge at me, but the police officer protecting me blocked him. The police officers restrained my in-laws from both sides. Alice. My husband, Mark, murmured my name and hung his head. I can't see you as my husband anymore. To do such terrible things to the people I care about. I trusted you. I managed to say this much, but the rest of my words turned into sobs and I couldn't continue. My name is Alice Smith, 52 years old. I am an ordinary housewife with one daughter. If there's anything different about me, it's that my grandparents were wealthy. When I was just one year old, my parents died in a car accident. So, I have no memory of my parents at all. Instead, I was raised with immense love by my maternal grandparents. Sometimes I envied my friends, who had both parents. But my grandparents cherished me so much that even my friends envied me. My grandpa, John, was the chairman of the Smith Group, managing several large companies, and my grandma, Emily, was his supportive partner. I grew up without any wants under this loving couple. They raised me, their only daughter's grandchild, with a warm heart. Our home had maids, chefs, gardeners, and many other people, all of whom treated me with great care. So I never had time to feel lonely, for which I feel a bit sorry for my parents. Back then, my paternal grandparents were still alive and would visit me a few times a year from a distance. But I remember feeling quite lonely when they passed away in later years. Right after graduating college, I married my husband, Mark. It was more like an arranged marriage. It was already decided that we would get married. I will marry someone suitable to take over my grandparents' company. I thought from a young age, and Mark was truly perfect in that regard. My grandparents chose him with all their might to ensure my happiness. Mark moved into our family as the spouse of the heiress. I had no complaints and was satisfied with this marriage. I can say that my married life with Mark was happy. Mark was determined to become the successor of our group through our marriage and worked hard to fit that role. People who saw our marriage as a strategic one wouldn't understand, but we truly came to trust each other. It wasn't a passionate love like a romantic marriage, but we quietly and firmly nurtured our love as a couple, seeing each other as irreplaceable. Well, that's how I felt. However, the one thing that troubled us was that we couldn't have children easily. My mom and grandma both married young and had daughters at the age of 20. I wanted to have children as soon as possible, like them. But I followed my grandparents' advice to at least graduate college. So I married Mark at 22 after graduating. Finally, at 29, seven years after our marriage, we were blessed with our only daughter, Hillary. Hillary was so adorable, and as a couple, we cherished her just as my grandparents had cherished me. Hillary is really my only weakness. If something were to happen to you, I don't know how I'd go on living. Oh, what about me? I can't be your weakness. No, it's not like that. Alice, you are important too. When I sulked, Mark got panicked. When I stopped teasing and laughed, Mark looked relieved. In that perfect happiness, the one thing that slightly darkened my expression was Mark's parents. From my perspective, my in-laws. How should I put it? 
They were the kind of people who would watch me slyly from below. I treated them politely because they were Mark's parents. But if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have wanted to get close to them. My father-in-law, Bill, was the president of a subsidiary of the Smith Group, but he didn't have much management skill. He had run the company he inherited from his parents into the ground and had to beg my grandpa for help, barely keeping it afloat. My grandpa used to say, if he weren't Mark's father, I'd remove him from his position, considering it a mistake. And my mother-in-law, Lisa, was just as unpleasant, always cozying up to me whenever something happened. Alice, there's a party at George's company, and I need to attend, but I don't have a suitable bag. She would hint at wanting something like that. Mark told me not to bother with her, but I always ended up giving her some kind of gift. Well, thank you so much. You don't have your mother around, Alice, so you can always rely on me as your real mother. Even when she said that, she didn't seem like a mother to me, and I always sighed secretly. I've been married to Mark for 30 years, except for my in-laws. It's been truly peaceful and happy days. Our daughter, Hillary, has grown up beautiful and straightforward. She graduated from college and is now helping with the company at 23. She's at that age. I thought about finding someone suitable for her as the next successor of the Smith Group. That's so old fashioned. I'll marry someone I choose. I was happy marrying your father. Just because it's arranged doesn't mean you can't meet a good person. Of course, I love dad, but I want to explore my own possibilities more. And I want to be happy with the person I meet at that time. Is that so wrong? Even when I suggested arranged marriage to Hillary, she brushed it off. At such times, my in-laws brought a marriage proposal for Hillary. The suitor was none other than Mark's brother, George's son. George himself is a good man, and there's no problem with him. However, he's five years older than Mark, had children earlier than us, and his son is much older than Hillary. Moreover, I heard that even at 35, he is still single because he resembles his grandparents more than his parents and gets rejected even when there's a marriage proposal. He also holds an executive title at his grandparents' company, but does nothing and just plays around. It's a good proposal, isn't it? This will strengthen our family ties. Yes, they're a perfect match. Being cousins, it's great. Not at all. Even if Hillary herself wanted to marry this man, I would oppose it. I leave Hillary's marriage to her. I refused. But even now, they bring it up whenever something happens, which is extremely unpleasant. Of course, Hillary herself also clearly told them, why would I marry such a person? And rejected it through her grandparents. Mark, being the father of our beloved daughter, also scolded them harshly. But it seems they haven't given up yet. Despite such happy days continuing, I never expected such a sudden storm to hit us. Hello, Alice? Yes, what's the matter? Listen carefully and stay calm. Hearing the words that flowed into my ear, I couldn't help but drop my smartphone. My grandparents had taken their own lives. Mark's call was to inform me of their tragic news. John and Emily said they were going to the vacation home, right? So I went to check on them to make sure everything was fine and to see how they were doing. But then... According to Mark, Grandpa shot Grandma with a hunting rifle and then jumped from the balcony into the garden. That's... that's unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. I was overwhelmed by the sudden heat recently. We decided to go to the vacation home earlier than usual to escape it. This year's heat is really unusual. It's tough on the elderly. Grandpa was 95 and Grandma was 92. Are you okay? 
If you're not feeling well, you should get checked at the hospital. It's not like that, Grandpa said with a smile. In the city, we end up relying on air conditioning too much. Yes, nowadays heat stroke is a big concern and everyone is told to use air conditioning. Air conditioning can be quite harsh on the elderly. So we thought we'd cool off with natural breezes. Saying this cheerfully, they went off to the vacation home. Grandpa and Grandma, why did you do this? I could do nothing but break down in tears. The tragedy of the Smith Group chairman and his wife shocked the public. The police began investigating the case, and my grandparents' bodies were taken to the police station. The funeral was to be held as a company funeral, so there wasn't much for the family to do. But doing nothing only made me repeat, why? Why did this happen? No matter how much I thought about it, I couldn't understand what caused it or what happened after we parted that day. Then Mark came to me and said, Actually, Actually, on that day, I had a bad feeling and went to the vacation home. A bad feeling? Yeah. I couldn't tell you. But your grandma had shown signs of dementia. What? That can't be true. I couldn't believe it. Whenever we met, both of them seemed a bit weak physically, but their conversations were always normal. I can't believe it. Something like that. But it's true. John consulted me about it, and he was quite distressed. So Grandpa was troubled by Grandma's decline and acted impulsively. I told the police about it. I'm sorry. If I had told you sooner, things might have turned out differently. Mark, with tears in his eyes, bowed his head to me. I was devastated by this new revelation and could only let time pass me by in a daze. A week after my grandparents took their own lives, a letter arrived at our house. It was from an accounting firm, but inside was another envelope. What? I was genuinely surprised to see the sender. It was a letter from Grandpa. It seemed that he had entrusted this letter to the accountant before his death. The envelope was marked confidential. I thought about telling Mark about the letter, but seeing that word, I decided not to. This letter was meant for me alone, so they didn't want me to tell my husband, Mark. I took it to my room, locked the door, and opened the envelope. Inside, it was written, read this without letting your husband notice. As I read on, I discovered shocking facts, and I hurried to the police. A few days later, the police came to our house to report. In the living room were Mark, our daughter Hillary, my in-laws, and me. We apologize for keeping you waiting. We have come to report the autopsy results of John and Emily Smith. The results were as Mark had said. Grandma was killed by the gun, and Grandpa died from the fall from the balcony. So what about the criminal aspect? That's the thing. There are some odd points. Odd points? Yes. The police officer took out some documents and handed out copies to everyone. The angle at which Emily was shot is strange. The angle? Yes. Please look at this. Everyone looked at the indicated spot in the documents. If she was shot from this angle, the height of the shooter becomes important. Height? Yes. The documents showed that the shooter's height was estimated to be 5 feet 11. John wasn't that tall. He was 5 feet 3. The difference of 8 inches is big. I can somewhat understand. It's a matter of angles. Even a middle schooler can grasp these numbers. But couldn't he have shot her from something he stood on? Suddenly, Bill said this. Yes, that's right. Bill is correct. There was a sofa in that room. It may be he shot her from on top of it. 
Have you been to that vacation home? Oh, well, no. I don't recall ever inviting you, Bill and Lisa, to my grandpa's vacation home. That's right. We never invited my in-laws there. Oh, well, we were invited to some another vacation home, right? That was our vacation home. Oh, right. I must have been confused. Yeah, that's it. Besides, there are sofas in any vacation home, aren't there? Well, that's true. My in-laws looked relieved. So, so, yeah, John must have shot Emily from on top of the sofa. Why would he need to do that? What? I mean, why would Grandpa need to go out of his way to shoot Grandma from an unstable position like a sofa? Oh, well. Lisa was at a loss for words. We don't know the reason. But if there's a height difference, that's the only explanation. By the way, Bill, you're quite tall for your age, aren't you? Bill's face twitched. You're almost 5 feet 11, right? I remember Mark saying he inherited his height from you. I've shrunk with my age. I'm not that tall anymore. His shoulders seemed to slump a bit. By the way, Bill, you also have a hunting license, don't you? No, I only have the license. I don't own a gun anymore. But do you know how to handle one? I don't know. Bill turned pale and started shaking. Everything is written in this letter from my grandpa. I know exactly what you did. The contents of my grandpa's letter were as follows. My in-laws were pressuring my grandparents to retire. They threatened my grandparents, saying if they didn't retire and hand over the chairmanship to Mark, they would suffer. And it also says here, if you are reading this letter, it means those two have done something to us. When I said this, Bill hastily denied it loudly. That's a lie. It's not a lie. Shall I read it out loud for you? Yes, it's all nonsense, lies. Even now, they refuse to admit what they've done. I was beyond angry, just utterly amazed. Just give me that letter. Bill tried to lunge at me but the police officer protecting me blocked him. The police officers restrained my in-laws from both sides. Mark, Mark, it's not true, right? We are innocent. Yes, you know that, right? My in-laws desperately called out to Mark. Dad and Mom, just stop. Mark, still seated, quietly told his parents. It's over. Everything is known. You can't keep hiding it. It's a lie. I didn't do it. Yes, it was my son, Mark, who did it. Yes, our son is trying to frame us for his crimes. My in-laws were trying to pin their crimes on their own son to escape punishment. You can tell your story at the station. The police officers escorted my in-laws out of the room. You lied to me, too. I'm sorry. I trusted you. Alice. My husband, Mark, muttered my name and dropped his head in defeat. I can't see you as my husband anymore. To do such terrible things to the people I care about. I trusted you. I managed to say this much, but my words turned into sobs, and I couldn't continue. Are you admitting to being an accomplice? Yes, I'm sorry. As Mark was about to be taken away by the police. Wait, please. Hillary called out to the police officer. My dad had nothing to do with this. Mom, there's proof. Dad didn't do it. Hillary. I thought Hillary was just trying to protect her dad. And it made me cry even more. Hillary. It's okay. No, it's not. I overheard something. That's why Dad isn't involved. Hillary seemed confident. What proof? Here, the time of the crime. At that time, my dad was still at home. Are you sure? Yes. 
Hillary nodded firmly. That day when I got home, I heard my dad talking on the phone. I don't know who he was talking to, but he was very shocked. Hillary explained to the police officer what she had overheard. My dad said, what have you done? Then, after listening for a while, he said, no, Hillary, but something like that. Hillary, you say? Yes. I was listening because I thought it might concern me, so I'm sure. It takes at least two hours to get from here to their vacation home, even if you rush. So, my dad couldn't be involved. I looked into Hillary's eyes. Those eyes were not protecting her dad or lying, they said. Anyway, we still need your husband to come to the station and talk. Mark was escorted out of the room by the police, following his parents. After the police investigation, it was revealed, as the letter stated, that my in-laws had been persistently pressuring my grandparents to hand over the chairmanship. Frustrated by their refusal, they thought that by getting rid of my grandparents, Mark would become chairman. Mark learned about his parents' actions through a phone call from them, which Hillary had overheard. I told my parents to turn themselves in, but they said if they did, Hillary would be known as the granddaughter of criminals. She would have to live with that burden for the rest of her life. They asked if I was okay with that. So I, I'm sorry. Mark confessed everything to the police, which greatly helped in uncovering his parents' crimes. Dad, it must have been tough. Your own parents committed the crime and then using me as a shield to threaten you. Hillary cried for Mark. I also felt despair thinking I had been betrayed by someone I trusted. But I understood that his concern for our daughter was significant. As a result, although Mark was initially suspected of being an accomplice, he was eventually not prosecuted for aiding and abetting murder. Aiding and abetting murder is a charge that can be brought against someone who knows about a crime and hides or protects the perpetrator. But in cases involving family, the emotional context can lead to forgiveness. This time, because of the gravity of the crime, I thought it might result in a severe outcome. But it seems it was recognized that dad couldn't speak out because he was thinking of me. That's how it turned out. My in-laws were, of course, charged with serious crimes. Given their age, they were eager to make Mark chairman as soon as possible and reap the benefits. But my grandpa had seen through their intentions. When my in-laws came to persuade my grandpa, he told them he wouldn't let them do as they pleased while he was alive, which led them to decide on the crime. We will probably never see my in-laws alive again. I hope they live the rest of their lives with some sense of remorse. George's son, whom they wanted to marry off to Hillary, he seems to be doing better now that he's away from his grandparents. As the eldest son of the eldest son, he was taken from his real parents and controlled by his grandparents, which left him unable to do anything on his own. Now, he's using his programming skills to start his own business and says he wants to become like his father someday. Mark wasn't charged, but he couldn't stay with the company so he stepped down. I took over the chairman position from my grandpa, and now we're waiting for Hillary and her fiancé to grow into their roles as worthy successors. Hillary really did find her own husband. I found someone who can be a great partner, just like you and Dad. So she told us this proudly. We were surprised, but the young man was so impressive and his parents were equally remarkable, that we felt we could entrust our beloved daughter to him with peace of mind. Will you wait for me until that day? I don't expect John and Emily to forgive me for my mistakes by taking care of you and Hillary from now on. But thank you, Alice. Mark is now my shadow, supporting me. When Hillary becomes independent, and I can finally lay down my heavy burdens. Well, 
I'd like to fall in love with you then. Don't you think we could have that kind of second life? When I said that, Mark just smiled silently.